And welcome once again, dear friends, to another edition of Fresh Bread. This is your pastor and teacher, Reverend Phil Anderson, here of Oakland United Methodist Church in Kansas Avenue United Methodist Church in the capital city of Topeka, Kansas. If you didn't know where that is, we are right in the middle of the nation. I think most of you listening know, know where it is because you're most likely members of either of those two churches. However, if you're a visitor, this came into this website wondering what we're all about we welcome you if you've been invited here by a friend or someone in the church that knows you and would like you to hear a little bit about what we're doing i'm so excited to have you with us we'd love to have visitors we have people listening in different parts of the state of kansas in different parts of the nation even in different parts of the world so we don't have a lot of listeners at this time but we do have some and they represent a broad area of our state our nation and the world so Welcome once again to Fresh Bread. We're going to start today with a word of prayer. Just, I ask you that you would join us at this time. Father, I thank you for bringing us together. We can freely discuss the word of God openly. We don't have to fear someone coming over and snatching the Bible from us or persecuting us, Lord. But Father, we know there are other people around the world that could be in great danger if someone found out they were reading their Bible or having a Bible study. Lord, we pray for those in our world who are suffering persecution because of the name of christ now lord i ask your blessing on this time together today that we would honor you in all that we say and do in jesus name i pray amen well again it is wednesday october 14th 2020 you know we have been kind of hit and miss here with galatians and something hit me there it is i was out walking said, you know i'm just going to read through this as uh, in, in as expeditious a fashion as possible and we may go back into some of these in the coming days that we've read about and just sort of pull out some highlights because I think these teachings are critical for so many different reasons. One of the main ones is we have to always remember, folks, that we are saved by grace and through our faith in Christ. We are not saved by our works. We're not saved by keeping the old covenant. We're not saved by maintaining the Ten Commandments that we've talked about in our Sunday services of late. We are saved strictly by the grace of God through faith in Jesus Christ. We add nothing to it. The minute we start trying to add to it and make it something that we have earned, that we have to somehow do to gain that salvation, that we are in very treacherous territory. If we do things that has to be under the complete awareness that it is all by the grace of God. So again, I'm exhorting you, I'm begging you, I'm pleading with you to take these messages from Galatians and some of the other books here that we read in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, excuse me, where Paul especially is trying to keep everybody on track with the pure message of the gospel. It's the gospel of grace. Please make sure you hold on to that because we don't want you to be led astray and start adding in works that have nothing to do with your salvation, your eternal destiny. It's all about grace. Once you have received that grace and you find that you're in that relationship with Christ, I believe it's just natural that you're going to do a lot of those things as are in the Ten Commandments anyway, but you're not doing those out of some sort of external effort to maintain and receive the blessings of God. He's already given you the blessings that are already yours. You don't have to work for them. Even if you sin, you don't have to do penance and pay back. God loves you. He, he sees Jesus Christ when he sees you. If you have received Christ as your Savior, no longer does he see your sins. He just sees his son, Jesus Christ, the spotless, sinless Lamb of God. Okay, so today let's go ahead and go into Galatians chapter 3. And it's titled, The Law and Faith in Christ. And by the way, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. So let's go ahead. O foolish Galatians, who has cast an evil spell on you? For the meaning of Jesus Christ's death was made as clear to you as if you had seen a picture of his death on the cross. Let me ask you this one question. Did you receive the Holy Spirit by obeying the law of Moses? Of course not. You received the Spirit because you believed the message you heard about Christ. How foolish can you be? After starting your new lives in the Spirit, why are you now trying to become perfect by your own human effort? Have you experienced so much for nothing? Surely it was not in vain, was it? I ask you again, does God give you the Holy Spirit and work miracles among you because you obey the law? Of course not. It is because you believe the message you heard about Christ. In the same way, Abraham believed God and God credited it to him as righteousness because of his faith. The real children of Abraham, then, are those who put their faith in God. Gentiles right in his sight because of their faith. God proclaimed this good news to Abraham long ago when he said, all nations will be blessed through you. So all who put their faith in Christ share the same blessing Abraham receives. 
because of his faith. But those who depend on the law to make them right with God are under his curse. For the scripture says, Cursed is everyone who does not observe and obey all the commands that are written in the Lamb God's book of life, law. So it is clear that no one can be made right with God by trying to keep the law. For the scripture saying, if through faith that a righteous person, it is through faith that a righteous person has life. This way of faith is very different from the way of the law, which says it is through obeying the law that a person has life. But Christ has rescued us from the curse pronounced by the law. When he was hung on the cross, he took upon himself the curse for our wrongdoing. For it is written in the scriptures, cursed is everyone who is hung on a tree. Though Christ, through Christ Jesus, God has blessed the Gentiles with the same blessing he promised to Abraham so that we who are believers might receive the promised Holy Spirit through faith. Dear brothers and sisters, here's an example from everyday life. Just as no one can set aside or amend an irrevocable agreement, so it is in this case. God gave the promises to Abraham and his child. And notice that the scripture doesn't say to his children as it is meant as, as if it meant many descendants. Rather, it says to his child. And that, of course, means Christ. This is what I'm trying to say. The agreement of God made with Abraham could not be canceled 430 years later when God gave the law to Moses. God would be breaking his promise for the inheritance would be received by keeping the law. Then it would not be the result of accepting God's promise. But God graciously gave it to Abraham as a promise. Why then was the law given? It was given alongside the promise to show people their sins. But the law was designed to last only until the coming of the child who was promised. God gave the law, God gave his law through angels to Moses, who was the mediator between God and the people. Now mediator is helpful if more if more than one party must reach an agreement. But God, who is one, did not use a mediator when he gave his promise to Abraham. Is there a conflict then between God's law and God's promises? Absolutely not. If the law could give us life, we would be made right with God by obeying it. But the scriptures declare that we are all prisoners of sin. So we receive God's promise of freedom only by believing in Jesus Christ. Before the way of faith in Christ was available to us, we were placed under guard by the law we were kept in protective custody so to speak until the way of faith was revealed let me put it another way the law was our guardian until christ came it protected us until we could be made right with god through faith and now that the way of faith has come we no longer need the law as our guardian for you are all children of god through faith in christ jesus and all who have been united with Christ in baptism had put on Christ like putting on new clothes. There is no longer a Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male or female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And now that you belong to Christ, you are the true children of Abraham. You see, his heirs, God's, and God's promise to Abraham belongs to you. And that concludes our reading today of this very powerful chapter 3 of Galatians. I do trust that, again, you'll be able to get into this scripture when you get a few minutes yourself and just really delve into these words that the Apostle Paul is telling us here. And again, search the scriptures as you make your decisions as to how you go about living your faith. I do pray that it would be one where the decision would be made that you would truly realize that it we are saved by grace and that we have freedom in Christ. We're no longer under the bondage of the law. We're no longer under bondage to sin or to self, but we are now free in Christ. Our identity is with Christ. We read that for freedom, God has set us free. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Don't go back into the bondage of slavery again. Well, let's conclude with a prayer. Shall we, Father, again, thank you for this time where we are able to meet together. Do I do ask your blessing upon those who are listening. Give them a great day in Jesus today. And we ask this in your name. Amen. Well, friends, thanks for joining me. Hope to see you again tomorrow back here at kaumc.church. Do have a great day.